Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're featuring a car called the Blade, 720 horsepower, extremely lightweight, but that's only part of the story. The real story is the technology behind it, and it's fascinating. Let's meet uh, the owner, developer, builder, founder, whatever you want to call him, Kevin Zinger. Kevin, come on in. It's Divergent Technologies, right? Divergent Technologies, Jay. Right, right. Now, first of all, because people are salivating here, let's tell us exactly what we have here, what so the you, car is. You have a two-seat uh, supercar. People are sitting tandem, right? Which, the, as you know, the best driving position is to be in the center of the car while you're right. driving it. And so it's, it's built as a fun driver's car. And it's uh, powered by a mid-engine uh, 2.4-liter uh, Mitsubishi Evo 10 motor okay. uh, built by AMS, Borden Stroke to 2.4-liter, as I said. And uh, with the boost up, you get about 720 horsepower at the flywheel. Right. And the weight of the vehicle, dry weight, is 1,388 pounds. <laughs> so wow. you get ridiculous power to weight. Yeah, yeah. I like any car when I sit in it, I'm a third the weight of the car. <laughs> That's always flattering, you know. Uh, no, that's pretty amazing. And the amazing part is the, the fact that you've got it built and you can actually drive it on the street. But it's really uh, the building of the car that's, that's the technology part, isn't it? I mean, the engine, you, get, you, you didn't build the engine. You get that from someone else. You, no. you, you're in frame and body. Explain what, explain what Divergent Technologies is. So, you know, as you know, the, the structure of the car is the most capital intensive and difficult part of a new car to build. Right. We now have a totally new set of technologies. We're combining computing power with material science with additive manufacturing, what people commonly call 3D printing. Right. And what that allows you to do is have a small design team, have them design a vehicle, run it across all of the physics models you need to engineer a full safety certified vehicle, and then the structure that gets generated by that work, by that computerized work, is then sent to a 3D metal printer. And what you're, in fact, doing is then printing out the skeleton. And the skeleton right. is made up of super op optimized, customized 3D Lego blocks made right. out of metal that fit together. And what that allows you to do is very quickly design something, build something with very low cost of capital, and then like some of your beautiful cars out there, like the Duesenbergs, where you right. had a carriage maker sculpt a beautiful body and put it on top of that chassis, then you can sculpt almost any non-structural body and put it on top of a car. So you're essentially 3D printing the chassis, for lack of a better word. Although the car doesn't technically have a chassis, but for people who don't quite follow it up to this point, you're not using an existing chassis from another car and building on it. You're doing it completely from the ground up. That's what we have here, correct? Good, correct, so okay. you know, typically when you're looking at cars today, they're built out of one material and they're kind of like the, to use an analogy, the exoskeleton mm -hmm. of a bug, right? The shell welded together is the structure. Here, it's like the bone structure of a mammal. You're choosing materials, optimizing those materials and then bringing them all together you know, with a non-structural shell like the body on this car. Uh, if you look, these uh, sort of flat gray uh, pieces of metal, those are 3D printed aluminum, a right. 4046 aluminum that significantly outperforms the standard auto structural aluminum, say a T6 uh, uh, cast aluminum. And these parts that are more rose colored, because we were building in this car a, a high performance supercar, are mm -hmm. titanium. So these rose colored parts here, you see on part of the suspension. And what we've done is, from a, a material selection standpoint, ordinarily with a car, you choose one alloy, a steel alloy, aluminum alloy, and you weld it all together. Mm -hmm. Here, you choose from the total palette of materials optimized for your use. You engineer that structure, right, and with a computer. Right. And then you use the 3D metal printing as the connective tissue for that structure. So your goal is not to necessarily build cars, but to build technology you sell to car makers. Is that fair to say? That, that's correct. And what I would say is, you know, we have a team of 50 plus very senior engineers and scientists from uh, auto and aerospace, from the SpaceX's, the Boeing Phantom Works, right. the Apple's, Google's, Ford's, etc. What we see is over the next five years, 
we can implement this with car makers in lower volume cars, say up to 50,000 or so vehicles manufactured annually. But the long term vision is really people like your viewers out there, within 10 years, you're going to start having volume customization of yeah. vehicles. And this technology will allow you to do that at a low cost with very high performance and safety. Right. So this is just a dramatic example, a running example of the technology that you manufacture. E exactly. Okay. This is just beautifully done here. That's all, obviously all 3D printed as well. I'll tell you what's super cool about that, yeah. which is people look at that and go, wow, you were trying to sculpt something beautiful. That's actually a computer algorithm going, what is the optimal way to structure that suspension? Right? So on the one hand, we're looking at geometries. We brought in Trevor Harris, who's one of the top racing car suspension builders, to talk about geometry. But when we actually looked at how we printed it, we used optimization software uh, uh, that we've partly developed and partly incorporated others. And the interesting thing is, it looks like something that's organic right. because nature is in such a competition for material and energy that it naturally optimizes material. And so when you see these vehicles, I think over the next 10 years, you'll see increasingly much more organic shapes. Instead yeah. of the boxy cars we'll have, all of a sudden you'll see beautiful bodies over very organic optimized structures. And with this kind of uh, work, you can crash test the car on the computer? Or do you still have to actually crash test it? Well, to, to safety certify it yeah. in the US. You must crash test. You, you yeah. need to crash test. But what it allows you to do is, you know, ordinarily you're doing uh, prototypes or mules and then you're going to some initial uh, crash prototype and then crashing that vehicle. What this allows you to do is very quickly develop the data, run a crash simulation like an LS Dyna, mm -hmm. right? Look at it and you know from having done all of the structural uh, destructive testing that it's very close to the model. You then can take that data, shoot it, build what is a production intent structure and crash it and do that in a fraction of the time with a fraction of the money. You don't, ordinarily you're going through that period of soft metal tooling, say three right, months right. or so, and then six months of hard metal tooling, that goes away. You're simply hmm. taking that data instead of machining tooling, costing hundreds of millions of dollars, scratch that hundreds of millions of dollars, scratch that time, send the data to a machine, a machine that doesn't care whether it's doing the trellis for that motorcycle or this, or, or yeah. this and it prints that out and then very quickly you can safety certify a vehicle. And this is carbon fiber here. Yes, so if, if you look at say like a BMW i3 or i8, which are spectacular cars, right. but they required for each of them about 400 million euros of tooling, according to BMW. And then the wet layup process is very time intensive. So you're ending up spending 400 million euros in, or you know, over 400 million dollars in tooling costs. Right plus you're spending probably $3,000 plus on materials. What we do instead is, once again, scrap that 400 million plus in tooling, and we, knowing that the aerospace industry has standardized all kinds of sheet paneling, shear paneling, tubing, uh, other materials that are very high performance, but because they're standardized and you're not asking somebody to create the first instance of it, mm -hmm. the price is driven down by 20 times. So wow. you can get the performance of a carbon monocoque at a fraction of the price in a fraction of the time without the tooling. How is this titanium connected to this? So in a, in a patented process that we have. Is it bonded? Is it bolted? It is bonded. Okay. This is bonded. The, the reason that there are, are bolts in this is for crash repair. Mm -hmm. So if you crash a section, you simply take out that section, bolt in a new section, gotcha. which is why you'll see some bolting. But here, part of the uh, patents that we have mean that 3D printing allows you to, rather than have fixturing, where you're fixturing sheet metal and then welding together, mm -hmm. it allows you to build in very complex features, tongue and groove type features. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. And then internally, although we've, uh, we've shaved it off, there are actually, uh, two separate ports, one where you draw a vacuum and then another where you, uh, you inject an aerospace epoxy and that at a precise dose and that quickly bonds all of these pieces together while isolating them so you have no galvanic issues mm -hmm. and also uh, insulating 
uh, the bond from the environment. So if you're in a salt air uh, environment, you're not going to have deterioration. And then these are just for a little the, extra. <laughs> well, no, those those are what? actually for the different sections for repairability. Okay. So if this, you know, we looked and obviously carved the vehicle up. So if you have right. damage, you can then just unbolt that section, take another 3D printed section and put it in. Okay. And structurally, this will take rollover, right? Yes, yeah. the, this vehicle, I'd say the one custom piece on this of, of material beside the 3D printing was this, uh, this top section, which okay. we, we actually printed the tooling Explain for. Explain this carbon layout. fiber here. You know, th this is just very standardized uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, tubing that you get from But aerospace. it's just to make it more structurally sound? Yes. Okay. I mean, the, you know, the crash uh, absorption is really in the, the side uh, okay, so if you of get the vehicle. Hit, this, is, this is side protection? Uh, yes, along with, I mean, this, this is an extruded, uh, aluminum extruded uh, okay. piece that's joined uh, for crash ab absorption. I'd say on this, this vehicle, if you look at the structures, uh, the other thing beside having those features that allow you to join the features, right. that front bumper piece also has within it a uh, crush structure. Okay. It allows, you know, as you know, things to crush evenly. Do they not have five mile an hour bumpers anymore that used to? I remember in the old, in the 80s yes. and one, you had a shock absorber that took that. Now it just, you just crushes and replaces. Yeah, it's, it's crush, yeah, oh, okay. you're, you're okay. crushing the rails. So okay. here, what we're doing is, as you know, aluminum extrusions are very low cost. Right. And what we can do then is very fine tune the printed structure so that it, it crushes in an exact even way. And you can have a very short front end right. and still have uh, this on, on LS Dyna, right? You, you know, you're getting, uh, you know, under 30 G peak uh, crash pulse, right? So, you know, this is, this is a way actually to incorporate features and optimize for crash that you can't do with a, uh, a regular uh, traditional manufacturing. Wow, and you, uh, let's just quickly look at what you did on the motorcycle. I've got an H2 Kawasaki, but it doesn't look anything like this. The modern well, the, H2, the supercharged bike. Yeah, it, it's a great bike, as you know. I mean, the acceleration. <laughs> yeah, over, I mean, it's, it. it's way faster than I am. It's, it's so fast. It's, it's hilariously fast, and this is even. So, what's your weight saving over the traditional frame? So, for, for the frame, it's an over twenty percent weight savings. Wow! And the frame structure for this bike has over a, a hundred different parts. We reduce that from over a hundred to five parts. And you can make this frame cheaper than they can make the steel frame, correct? Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah it seems like a win-win. I mean, this looks like. And it's super cool looking. The future, it is super cool looking. Speaking of super cool looking, let's go back to uh, the blade here. Sure. This is, this is the one I think that really gets the attention because what you're saying all sounds exciting, and then when you see it in the flesh, pretty impressive. Who designed it? You guys style it yourself in house, or? Yeah. So I, I originally came up with being a Cleveland hot rodder. I had my fantasy of what like a super cool car would look like, and that would be one where the driver sat in the middle position. Uh, you sat tandem with another passenger right. so that you minimized frontal surface area. Uh, and then my favorite feature of a car was during the Can-Am era, there was a T70 Lola that had these gorgeous curves for the fenders. And so I brought those elements together and then our chief designer, uh, Dave O'Connell, who, right. who teaches over at the Art Center College for design, he was also the chief designer for Mitsubishi for about 20 years. He came in and we worked on many, many versions of this, uh, came up with the design and this is it. Yeah. Is there any chance this could go into production or is this just your working model? I mean, we, we have uh, an engineered uh, version of this that we could put into production, but for right now we're focused on taking right. the technology and you know, helping companies and entrepreneurs, really in the end, what we really want to do is focus on entrepreneurs who want sure. to build cars, uh, focusing on taking this technology and helping them use it. But if you wanted to build a limited series of these, we would be all for it. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. That's very kind. Now, how do, you, how do you get in? How do you open the door? So, you know, you just uh, get in through the side. Oh, look at that. And, okay. uh, you know, there's one passenger who sits in, in back. Right. You sit a little bit, a little bit like a toboggan sled. And right. I'll, I'll say that... Uh, and you they know, put their feet up the side, so it's, yeah, it's just, just like going to the gynecologist, basically. <laughs> basically the way it is. 
get in the I, back I haven't, and you I haven't sit been like myself. That, that, but yeah, yeah, so basically, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this this is built as a Cleveland hot rod. So well, this is sort of like uh, your favorite car here, and one of mine is the Gordon Murray Rocket. Oh he yeah. He built that 27 years ago. I know that is such a great car. I'm so jealous of you. That's my favorite car. It in really world. is, and it's a fantastic car to drive because you, again, you sit well in the middle, but you're in the center of the car. So consequently, your feet can go all the way to the front without hitting any of the uprights. So somebody can be eight feet tall and drive it. You know, LeBron James could drive right. that thing, and that's what makes it kind of cool. And it's the same thing here. Yes, exactly. And and we've had some very tall people uh, get in the car. And and the cool thing is. Uh, you know, unlike the Rocket, which obviously is a great car, you can have somebody in the back seat, and they have like very cool viewing and, and sighting uh, out of the car. Okay, so you you only get in on one side, this side, correct? Yeah, the the other door is an emergency door. If something happens, obviously you can okay, flip that, flip it up and and that and has the, door the comes that has the two carbon fiber yeah sort of poles yeah. per, perch poles, the Stanley Brothers would call them, going <laughs> through the car. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Okay, gearbox is what. It's a Hollinger six-speed sequential gearbox okay. uh, with you know paddle shift uh, on the steering wheel. Gotcha, gotcha. And you know mid-engine, uh, you know, I'll show you we uh, uh, we wanted to have a light, you know, very power-dense motor. Tight it's, fit, huh? It is a tight fit. Uh, it's a very tight fit in this. We wanted a very compact car, and we wanted to keep this beautiful sculpted body and keep the lines. I use the old Gordon Murray trick of the gold foil to reflect the heat. Right, yeah, and so that's that's actually a CNG tank, and this car is able to run both on compressed natural gas oh, okay. and gasoline, so it has two sets of injectors. It's running on gasoline right now. Okay. Uh, but you're able to, to use either fuel, and so if you wanted to have something unique like a green supercar, you, right. could, you could run a 700 horsepower supercar off of CNG, you know, living around here, there's plenty of CNG. Right, but right. If you, if you started to run low on CNG and couldn't find a place, you just pull over, get it filled up with gasoline, and keep going. Do you have to switch it manually? Or does it automatically? No, you have to. You th th this is this is manual. You could easily yeah. set it up to switch sure, it automatically. Sure, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, but you know, we were building this as a technology demonstrator. Got hot you, ride. got you. Well, yeah, it's really cool. And it's street legal? We can take it, it is. out? It is. Yeah, absolutely. We can take it out. This was California registered, VIN number, license plate, the whole deal. Let's take it for a ride. Custom set. I mean, using mainly their off-the-shelf parts, yeah, but yeah. I mean, they're they're terrific.
shut it off because it's a little noise. You probably couldn't hear us talking this thing. It's a lot of fun. You've got all kinds of power. and It's incredibly light. I think the one little problem we have is I think it's been sitting for a while and the tire's got a bit flat spotted. So you're getting a thump, thump, thump that diffuses yeah. a, a little a vibration. Little, a little vibration through the tire. So obviously I don't want to uh, push it too hard for that reason. How old are these? Are they old tires? No, they're probably six months old, I'd say. Oh, that's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah but I think it just got a bit flat spotted, so you get a little bit of that. But, I mean, obviously, you see how this thing works. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's 1,300 pounds. If this was a traditional build automobile, you'd probably be looking at, oh, 2,400, 2,500 at least. So you're at least 1,000 pounds lighter than anything else. And it certainly attracts attention. I think every iPhone in the city is showing up to look at this thing. But... Uh, well, we'll drive some more and take it back to the shop. I just don't want to push it too hard because I'm not sure on these uh, on these tires. So just, just get a little bit of a shake. What did you say? You hit a pothole the other day? Yeah, yeah. When we took it out, we had it in the the uh, showroom of our business. You know, it's a technology demonstrator. Yeah, yeah. I took it out for a couple of runs and hit a hit a pothole at uh, pretty high speed. And LA is I've blown two Tesla tires in a month. Just bam, just hit a pothole, and knock it out. So. I think that's what we, I think that's what we did. Probably did a little tiny bit of damage there, so I can feel a little shaking coming through the chassis. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Come on, let's go. Let's go back to the shop. We'll drive it. I've had great fun riding with you for sure. Well, you can talk a little bit when you're in six gear. Yeah. Obviously, this is a prototype vehicle, so you don't have an outside mirror on this thing and a few of the other things, but. The real technology in this thing is the build. That's, it's how it's put together and the material it's used. I mean, I give them a tremendous amount of credit for having a running prototype. It's actually pretty cool. Well, pretty cool. I mean, uh, you know, I always say the last days of old technology are better than the first days of new technology. And this is the future. I mean, uh, he was telling me he hit a pothole, so we got a little bit of a shake in the chassis. But obviously, that's, I think, due to the fact that the tires are hard, and uh, he took a chunk out of it when he hit that pothole. But, geez, it, it, I mean, you feel the lightness of it. You know, you put your foot in it, and it moves. And just the build structure, the way it's put together, it's really fascinating. I mean, this is the way cars of the future, I think, will be built. I mean, the old days of pouring molten metal and making steel. I mean, this is it. Carbon fiber, 3D printing. Very, very cool. Kevin, thank you very much, my thank friend. You. Thank, thank you, thank you, Thank you, and check out the website. Uh, Divergent3D.com. Divergent3D, check it out. I think uh, you're gonna be hearing a lot from these guys. This is cool. Jay, you're awesome. And Thanks so much. And it's in California. There you go. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>